Hello and welcome. In our previous tutorial, we were able to customize the contract form. We were able to create the contract model uh, in PyCharm, and we were also able to uh, register the model in the admin page. And then we were also able to create the contract form for handling the, uh, the contract form, the HTML contract form. And then we were able to uh, add, uh, add the form in, into, inside our view. And then we are also able to add the form uh, inside the template. And uh, finally, we were able to customize the settings by adding the email backend so that whenever we submit the form, uh, the email, uh, it prints out in the console as you, as you can see here. So now in this tutorial, we are going to see how we can arrange this form. Uh, but before we do that, I would like to show you what is happening in the background remember we sent a couple of emails so not a couple, actually they're just two emails that we sent and as you can see in the back end we have these two emails if you click on any one of them you can see we have these uh, details so the other thing is that you can see that we have the two fields here the email and the subject which are being uh, managed by this admin.py because we added the list display. Okay. So uh, today we are going to look at uh, something that we call the crispy forms. And there's this uh, module or there's this uh, package that is called the Django crispy form. And it is used in, uh, you know, style arranging and, you know, customization of the forms. And the first step will be installing it. And uh, this works well also with Bootstrap. And uh, I think the first, you're going to look at, uh, briefly look at the code inside the GitHub. Uh, so this is the Django Crispy form. Uh, the Django Crispy form works well with uh, up to Bootstrap four and uh, if you remember very well when you we were styling our project we were using the bootstrap uh, five and uh crispy forms so we have these crispy forms inside the cheese shop. So we have this crispy bootstrap five. So this is customized to work with bootstrap five, whereas the other one is uh, works with up to bootstrap four. So just to try and explain this, if you look at our template, our base template, you look, if you look at the imports that we are doing, we are working with bootstrap five, not bootstrap four. And here below on the imports, we are working with Bootstrap 5. That's why we are we would want to work with this crispy Bootstrap 5. And I can see the latest uh, version here is uh, 0 0.6. So we are going to install it. And uh, if you do recall, uh, the way we were installing the other libraries, we were installing them inside the Docker uh, container. And then we rebuild our container. So we are going to run the command docker compose exec and then the container name which is web and then we'll run ppen install because we are using ppen and then let me copy this and i'll just paste it here and then i will add these two lines uh, for that version then I can wait and see what it, it does. So it is installing the Bootstrap 5. And one thing you'll notice is that this, this is a Linux environment. And uh, the host machine that I'm using is Windows. So you can see that it is indeed installing in some Linux container. It's not installing in the local machine. So we have been able to install the uh, ppn successfully. Now, for, in order for us to synchronize the local pip file that we have and the pip file that is inside the container, we need to rebuild our, 
our container. So we first run a Docker compose down to stop the container. And then we will uh, start the container with uh, the rebuild. With Docker compose up in a detached mode, and then you can add these two dashes and build. That can be we rebuild our container. So it should not take a lot of time. As you can see, it has completed. And then uh, let's see. Uh, first of all, let's confirm that our website is still up and running. Okay, so it seems to be okay. And uh, the next step is to customize our settings.py file. Uh, you can follow the steps in the this the this doc, the documentation or this particular uh, website here in the cheese shop that states that we we'll add crispy forms and crispy bootstrap five, and we we'll add also these two uh, variables inside the settings or the configuration uh, the configurations. So we will start by adding the apps here. So we have our local apps. So below here I'll create Add a comment and I'll call it this third party libraries, and then I can add my crispy. Let me just copy it from here. I'll add it there in our settings, and then. I will also add these two somewhere below in our settings the py file. Just add crispy configs. Yeah, so after adding that, we can be we can add we can try and check our contract.html file. So we have it up here. So below this we can add can load the crispy uh, form tags. These ones are not under uh, inside the quotes. So uh, these they are what we call the com the template tags for Django. And I, I'm noticing that it's not actually it has not imported it because you can see these and inside the settings file you can realize that we have this. It's also saying package requirement is not satisfied. And then I'll start it uh, with the build command. I think you can also run restart, uh, though I'm not sure you can refer it to the Docker uh, documentation. So let's see if our demo is picked up. Yeah, so we are still encountering the same errors. Crispy uh, form tags. Let me make a reference to this. Crispy forms and crispy bootstrap five. Let me confirm that they're okay here. Uh, in order to ensure we have harmony, let me just add them in single quotes because I just copy pasted them. The double quotes, and for these ones, I'll do the same. Okay, let's see if uh, anything has changed. Oh yeah, so uh, I was missing an S here. So it should be crispy forms tags. And uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so we cannot see our form, which is weird. Yeah, so it should not be dot, dot here. It should be this sign, whatever, it, I don't know what to call it. Pipe uh, for operator or something. So you can see how our form looks like. Uh, it's still not very good, but it it actually has filled in the entire screen. So maybe we can wrap. And then we can wrap these ones in a div. And then you can call the class. Container. 
let's see what happens when we do a refresh yeah so our form now looks at least okay and then we can also test by also checking it inside a mobile view as you can see it looks awesome so now you can use the form without any issues I'm just writing a sample message. Let me submit. Uh, let me open the logs. Actually, we can also check the logs using Docker. We had done this earlier. You can see even the errors that you are you are encountering. You can see monitor them in the logs. Yeah, and you can see we have the email here inside the logs the message and it redirects to home page so we have been able to create the contact form and uh, maybe in the next tutorial we are going to see how we can uh, i'm not sure we may check on the blog or we can check on the setting up of the authentication uh, logging in and signing up of the users and uh, at least now because we have the crispy forms we can be able to uh, or play around with our yeah, sending of emails and what have you. So if you li you've liked this video, uh, don't forget to like, uh, share the video with your friends, uh, and you can also share the entire playlist. And uh, don't forget to keep to click on the like on the bell icon, so that whenever I share a content, you can be able to get a notification. Uh, well, thank you for watching. Uh, let's meet in the next tutorial.